Success mellows some. Not everyone, though, and certainly not Urbain Jean-Joseph Le Verrier. The man who discovered Neptune at the tip of his pen received, and very rapidly came to expect, a hero's reception. His professional peers understood what he had done, while the public received him with all the reverence due a magician who could conjure a planet out of equations. As the mathematician Ellis Loomis wrote in 1850, the sagacity of Le Verrier was felt to be almost superhuman. Language could hardly be found strong enough to express the general admiration. Loomis himself was slightly less moved, noting that the outcry was somewhat extravagant. No matter, he added, even a more sober assessment of Le Verrier's achievement would still have earned him, Loomis concluded, the title of first astronomer of the age. Le Verrier concurred. He was first among not quite equals, as he emphasized in what was almost his first professional act after Gala's sighting was confirmed by other observers. At issue, what to call the new planet. Le Verrier had an obvious answer, given the naming convention of the rest of the planets, drawn from the Roman pantheon with Uranus, the one Greek outlier. He proposed Neptune, god of the sea and Jupiter's brother. That choice tangled the sequence of the family tree. Saturn was both Jupiter and Neptune's dad, and Uranus was Saturn's father. Still, Le Verrier's choice fit with the broad sense of how to address a respectable planet. The same sentiment that attached names like Ceres and Pallas to the largest of asteroids discovered earlier in the century. So far, so good, though there was some dissent from the English, who preferred Oceanus in a nod toward the claim that an astronomer from their sea-girt island had a hand in the discovery. But while that move may have irritated Le Verrier, with cause, it seems to have occurred to him rather quickly that he might have undersold his triumph. So he withdrew from the naming stakes and turned to his colleague François Arago, director of the Paris Observatory, to represent him at the new planet's christening. Arago did so, making a proposal that might have aroused some suspicion in uncharitable minds. Le Verrier's planet should be called Le Verrier. The honoree made an unconvincing show of humility, a public stance undercut by his sudden shift on what to call the seventh planet from the sun. Now, for the first time in his career, he took to addressing Uranus by the name only English astronomers still occasionally used, Herschel. As for Britain in the 18th century, so for France, and Monsieur Le Verrier in the glorious 19th. The maneuver failed, obviously, in part because Herschel's son John rejected the idea of relabeling his father's find, and more because no astronomers beyond Paris, and not many there, could stomach a celestial Le Verrier glowering down on them night after night. The earthbound version ultimately gave up the attempt, and the consensus remained with what had, from the start, seemed like the obvious choice, Neptune. Thank <laughs> you.